Hello everybody, welcome to Road to Manhood. Today we're gonna answer the burning question. Off-roading versus overlanding. There's a lot of debate out there amongst the two different groups and honestly some interesting heated debates. But I'm about to break it all down for you so hopefully we can give you guys some perspective. Let's talk about it. Alright, alright, can we go ahead and put our gloves down for just a moment, you know, maybe grab a beer, dip your tip into that Texas campfire salsa and just chill. With overlanding growing faster than ever, there's a lot of debate out there amongst avid off-roaders and overlanders. Given they do have a few similarities such as being off the main road and also somewhat similar modifications that have parties of each different groups scratching their head. Nonetheless, they're both amazing pastimes and hella fun, but they offer two totally different experiences. But first, before you go on road raging your dirty little phalanges in the comment section, under god damn that guy just died. Understand that these are simply the key differences. Mix them up as you please, don't worry I'm sure your rig looks awesome. Moving on! Off road. By definition, away from smooth surfaces and on rough terrain. Many avid off-roaders are satisfied by challenging 4x4 only trails. Nothing better than getting a group of friends together and going muddy or testing out the limits of your rig with rockier terrain, steep hills, and raising the ability to take on tougher and tougher trails. Off-road vehicles are normally built with one thing in mind, rough terrain and overcoming intense obstacles. Bigger mud tires are normally applied to max out surface area for grip, larger suspension for best ground clearance, departure angles, and can handle wild articulation, full body armor not just under the vehicle but sometimes even over the vehicle just in case this happens. <gasps> Zam! Overland. A long distance travel literally overland with the idea of camping on or near your vehicle. Overlanding is about the experience off the main road from one destination to another and using a self-sustainable vehicle as a one step up from primitive camping. Yes, there are trails involved, but the main difference is overlanders are not out seeking tougher and tougher trails on purpose. Even though, yes, those tougher trails are definitely a welcome challenge, but the original idea is to have some off-road features to take on those trails as needed. This makes overlanding doable for all kinds of vehicles ranging from cars, trucks, to vans. Not necessarily saying off-roading is only limited to jeeps and trucks, but I mean, come on. That being said, the off-road gear is not as aggressive compared to an avid off-roader. Other modifications and gear are more important to obtain the best experience in a self-sustainable environment. For example, and also keep in mind talking about a standard rig, when it comes to suspension, one of the main differences, and not limited to, would be something like the leaf packs would be added to that upgrade to support more weight. But regarding height, you're talking about two to three inches clearance, not normally more due to being top heavy from all the camping gear. You do not want to topple over out a big bend with no signal. That would suck. When it comes to tires, you're not necessarily limited to mud terrain tires. All terrain tires are welcomed as weight, durability and comfortability is normally in mind when choosing a tire for overlanding. Body armor as well is not necessarily to protect the entire vehicle but mainly under the vehicle just in case the trails get that intense. Most of the recovery gear is the same from off-roaders from winter recovery boards. Camping though and self-sustainability is going to be the main difference. Camping gear ranges from rooftop tents to cooking gear and so on. And when it comes to self-sustainability, you want to be able to get yourself out of a bind or have everything you need when you're out and about in the booms, such as extra gas, water ports, air compressors, ham radios, repair tools, and etc. Being self-sustainable is really a security feature that also gives you so many more options. This doesn't mean you're only limited to the campsites in the wilderness, as it's not about the destination but mainly about the travel experience. 
so feel free to book an RV site and enjoy the amenities after taking on some county roads and obscure trails. Your options are simply limitless. Overall, if this was some sort of UFC fight, they wouldn't even be in the same weight class, man. Two different things. Off-roading is an extremely fun and exciting for those who are seeking a thrill and ready to test out the limits of their amazing vehicles. Overlanding, simply put, is for the explorer who want to take on roads that less traveled, create new memories in new places. So can we all just get along? Stop hating on each other's rigs? Everybody works so hard to get where they're at, they deserve the kudos that they accomplished. We have different needs and it's amazing to see everybody's different rigs out there. I learned something new from each and every one of your groups. I hope this was helpful. Like and subscribe. Be a part of the Road to Magic community where we live, learn, and grow together. Watch more videos right now.